Okay, I'm going to show you how to use the separatory funnel to do an extraction. So what I have here is I have water with some blue food coloring added just to make the layers um, that we're going to get a little bit easier to see on the video. So first I have, this is my 250 milliliter separatory funnel. It fits inside of the O-ring and this is how we actually hang it and then we're able to remove it and put it in. So that's what you want to use in your hood to hold up your 250 and your 125 milliliter separatory funnels. What I'm going to do is in my, doing my extraction I'm going to add an organic solvent to the organic um, or to the aqueous layer in this case. Now you want to make sure that when you put your separatory funnel in the o-ring that this stopcock is closed so that the solution doesn't pour out onto the bench top and make sure that this um, screw over here is tight so that there's no leaking of the stopcock. And if you have a problem with the stopcock tell the, tell me, tell the instructor or the TA and, and we'll make sure that it's working otherwise we'll get you a new separatory funnel. So to do the extraction then, I'm going to add an organic solvent. I'm going to add the dichloromethane that you're going to add in your um, extraction of the essential oils. I'm going to add roughly about 20 milliliters of the dichloromethane to this solution, to the aqueous solution. Now normally we do extractions in portions. We'll add three 10 milliliter portions. I'm going to do two roughly 20 milliliter portions in this video. But we add the, we add a portion of the organic solvent to the aqueous solution. Then I'm going to put the cap on and you can see that dichloromethane and water are immiscible. The dye is only soluble in the aqueous layer. Normally you don't have that dye to tell you which, which layer is the aqueous layer and which layer is the organic layer and I'll show you how we do this, do that in a moment. So now I'm going to take my, my mixture out and I'm going to do the extraction. So make sure that the cap is on tight. What I like to do is grab it with this hand and then I'll invert and vent. The solvents that we do extractions with are fairly volatile so we actually can generate pressure inside of the separatory funnel. So what I like to do is to shake a little bit and vent. And shake a little bit and vent. If you hear that that like sound, that's the pressure coming out. Okay. And you can gradually get more aggressive in your shaking, but what we want to do is mix the layers up really good. Now I'll turn this back upside down put it back in the o-ring and then I like to kind of swirl it this way and now the layers will separate since they are insoluble. Now what you see here is you see that the light blue color is because there are bubbles of water in that solution or in the separatory funnel. That's called an emulsion and so what we have to do is let the bubbles kind of break themselves up and you can already see here that the this is the line between the aqueous and the organic layers. Sometimes tapping it might help. And sometimes I'll take and just simply swirl the solution around. And that kind of helps the layers separate. Okay. So we're going to take a moment here and let, and let the layers separate. And you can see that none of the blue dye is soluble in the dichloromethane. Now again, in this case, I know what the aqueous layer is, I know what the organic layer is, but in general we don't know that. So what we do to determine which layer is which is, the easiest method that we have is just simply to take a sharpie and mark the top of each layer. And then what I would do is then I'm going to add a few milliliters of water to tell me which layer is which. So I'll take my wash bottle, I'll take my, my stopper off, 
I'll take my wash bottle and I'm just going to pour in a few milliliters of water. I usually suggest probably 5 to 10 milliliters. I'm going to put the cap on and this is the key step. After you've added the water you need to swirl the solutions so that you can get them to mix. Okay, and in this case I'm going to swirl it because I don't want to break up the emulsion. But I need to kind of swirl it to get the layers to mix. And now if I look at this, you can see that the bottom layer didn't move, it didn't grow, therefore the bottom layer is not aqueous. But the top layer did increase in its size and therefore that top layer is the aqueous solution. Like I said, when you do this in lab, you're not going to have the color-coded system here to tell you which is which. So you have to add water and the other thing about extractions is that it's the density difference between the two solutions that gives which one's on top and which one's on the bottom. And sometimes when we do extractions, the person next to you might have density differences that are slightly different. So each person has to test for each extraction which layer is which. You never assume that the top layer is organic or aqueous and the bottom layer is the other. You always test. And this is the method that we've come up with through the years that is the simplest one to make sure that we identify the layers. Okay, so now I've separated, the two layers have separated. In this experiment with the cloves, we want to isolate the organic layer, which is the bottom layer, the dichloromethane. And so what I would now do is I would now drain that bottom layer into my Erlenmeyer flask. And so I take the stop, the stopper off, because there's a physics thing about pressure that if I leave the stop, stopper on, eventually this won't drain anymore. So I'm simply going to drain the bottom layer into my Erlenmeyer flask. Now if we're doing this in portions, usually for the first portion or two, I leave a little bit of the solvent in the separatory funnel, and then at the end I try and cut the layers as close together as I possibly can. Okay, so now I've drained the layers, I've drained the layers, and so now what I want to do is I could do a second extraction, and to do the second extraction I would now add my second portion, my fresh portion of dichloromethane, put the cap on it, probably swirl to begin with, then invert it, kind of shake, and vent, shake, vent, shake, and vent, and then I would swirl it before I put it back in there in order to help the layers separate. So as the layers are separating then, once the two layers have separated and all the emulsion has been broken, then I will take the bottom layer and I will empty it into the Erlenmeyer flask that I had just placed my sample in. So in other words, we want to do what's called combining the portions together. Now when you have an organic solvent that is the top layer, what you have to do is to take the bottom layer, put it into an Erlenmeyer flask, and then take the top layer and put it into another Erlenmeyer flask and then you pour the aqueous solution back in and then add your second portion of organic solvent. When you're doing extraction it's extremely important that you throw nothing away. Nothing goes in the waste jar until you've absolutely gotten your final product because if you mess up at which layer is which we can always find that layer in your hood in one of the marked Erlenmeyer flasks, but once it goes in the waste bottle, we can't get it back. So you always keep your fractions labeled, and so then that way we know which is which. So these layers are almost separated out here. 
and I'm just going to do two extractions on this solution. And so once these layers are completely separated, then I'm going to drain the second portion into my Erlenmeyer flask that contains the first portion. Right. And then the next thing I will do is I will dry that solution. And I'll show you how to do that and what to look for. Okay. So layers, this is the problem with emulsions, is that it sometimes takes a little bit of time for the layers to completely separate. So I'm going to go ahead and just, sep and just separate it to save time. So I'm going to go ahead and drain the bottom layer into my Erlenmeyer flask. And I'm going to overshoot here and get a little bit of the aqueous solution in the Erlenmeyer flask just to show you what it would look like. So in this case, if you look at this Erlenmeyer flask, what you see are the little blue solvent balls floating on top. Well, that's because the water is less dense than the dichloromethane solution. So we have to remove the water from the solution. And even if there weren't these little balls of water in the solution, we would still have to dry it. So how am I going to dry this solution? Well, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go ahead and add some sodium sulfate drying reagent to this solution. Now, sodium sulfate is an anhydrous solid that when it reacts with water, it forms a hydrate. And so it actually just basically absorbs the water. And so what, there's, no, there's no set amount of sodium sulfate that you have to add. What we do is we add the sodium sulfate and swirl the solution until the sodium sulfate doesn't clump anymore. And so what does that mean? Let me take a spatula or two here of sodium sulfate and pour it into this dichloromethane solution. Okay, and then let's see if I can get a picture of it in terms of trying to swirl around. Now as I swirled it around, hopefully you can see that here on the bottom, you have the sodium sulfate clumped around the water bubbles. There's still one right here in front, so if I swirl it some more, hopefully the sodium sulfate will capture that. Now if you look carefully in this solution, you'll see the blue clumps of the sodium sulfate, and then there's also some powdery sodium sulfate in here. So what we generally do is we say that you add the sodium sulfate until it doesn't clump anymore. And so in this case you can see the big blue, the light blue clumps, and then you can see the white powdery material. So I think I've probably added enough to this solution to get the um, sodium sulfate so that it's in a powdery form and not in a clump form, although you could argue that I probably would need another scoop, but what we do is you just kind of have to look for no more clumps and then if you're in doubt just ask the instructor or the TA and we'll show it and we'll show we'll see that you've added the appropriate amount. The other thing that will happen is the solution will clear up after you add the drying reagent and so you can see this solution is really clear. So I think I've added enough for this. So then what we would do is we would let that sit for about 10 minutes or so, uh, stirring it occasionally. And then I would decant my organic solution away from the solid into a round bottom flask. And then I would go ahead and remove the solvent um, using the rotary evaporation technique that I talked about in the uh, pre-lab lecture. So this is what you're going to do in lab. You're going to take the solution that you get, the aqueous solution that has the essential oil in it. You're going to extract three times with small portions of dichloromethane. It tells you in the procedure how much to use. And then you're going to go ahead and dry that dichloromethane extract. And then 
decant that solution into the round bottom and then we would go ahead and do rotary evaporation on that. Okay, so this is how we extract, this is how we determine which layer is organic, which layer is aqueous, and this is how we add the drying reagent and we add enough drying reagent so we have some powdery form and it's not all just clumped together and typically the solution will clear up after we add the drying reagent.